Are you ready for this one? I'm gonna be showing you how to create this awesome double exposure effect in Photoshop. I love this effect. You can mash up photos together. You can create this cool effect when you manipulate a human face or an, even an animal face and you can chuck, you know, mountains, trees, any types of images to create a cool collage. Now I'm gonna show you how to do this effect. So let's jump into Photoshop. So I'm gonna go to File and I'm gonna click on New. I'm just gonna make it the 1080 by 1920 normal square pixel size. I'm just going to turn this layer off with the background and I'm just going to add a solid color and just make it a red as you can see and we'll make it like a dark brownie reddish color which is cool. I can delete the other layer which we had previously and then what you need to do is you need to go download some images. So I've actually gotten my images from Envato Elements. If you want the link you can check it out below in the description. But you can see here I've downloaded sort of this cloud isolated black background. That is really cool. I've also went and downloaded a bison. I found something like this. And really what you want to look for is you want to look for a face. So this one would probably be a good one as well. You can see it's got a nice face. You can get a bison, you can get an animal, a lion, whatever you're feeling for the day. If you're trying to, if you don't have Envato, what you can actually do is go to Unsplash and it's got all these amazing photos. So I typed in mountains into Unsplash and I was trying to go for that bison, canyon, rocky, um, dry type of feel and that's why I went for mountains. So what you want to do is look for like mountain tops and just scroll through and try and find ones where it's like a mountain peak. So you can type in like mountain peak even and try and get some photos like this. Once you're happy with your photos, get them from the folder and I'm just gonna dump everything in here. So what I did is I dumped my bison image inside just like this. I scaled him up, which is really cool. And what we need to do is we need to cut out the background and that's the first thing. So what we need to do is go to select and then click subject. And this is going to select the area around the bison. I'm gonna press Control alt r on the keyboard and this should go into the masking mode. You can change the different overlays so you can see what's happening, what's going on. I usually use black. And then what I like to do is click the refine edge tool at the top left, you can see the second little icon. And what you wanna do is you wanna go along just the very edge and just highlight just like that so you're getting the fur and the hair like that and what Photoshop should do is it should start to get rid of that and you want to make sure that decontaminate colors is ticked as well you can always make the brush a bit smaller I like to make it minus it and just go a little bit smaller and you can do that with the shortcut key by pressing the square brackets left square bracket is smaller and right square bracket is bigger and I'm, I'm sure you know that shortcut but you know I'm all about dropping those shortcuts for you guys once you're happy, what you want to do is you want to press OK. And now you can see we cut out this background, which is really cool. Now what I'm going to do is I have this layer mask. You can see the black and white. The white is showing all we need to see. I'm going to press B for the brush tool. And I'm just going to paint around the head. And just, I want to get rid of everything outside that. So you can paint it out. You can also use the lasso tool. The shortcut key for that is L. So I can trace around the face like that. And then what I like to do is press Control shift i to inverse and press Control delete Make sure that you have the right selected, make sure the foreground's on black. So when I press Control delete or Command delete if you're on a Mac, it will get rid of everything um, outside that selection. And if I need to clean anything up, so you can see there's like a line, a weird line thingy here. I'll just go and I brush it out using the black color just to hide that so I don't want to show anything. So working with Photoshop can get kind of messy guys, just remember that. Beautiful. So we've got our bison face, our bison head. I'm just going to scale it and bring him into the middle there. And if I need to, just make sure I'm, nothing else is showing, just rub that out like that. And then what I can do is I can right click and on the layer, and you can actually just rasterize this or convert to smart object if you want. It's already rasterized, but beautiful. Amazing. So what I'm gonna do is drag in my mountain top. So I've got heaps of them. You can see here I've got a few examples. So I'm just gonna drag them and drop them in. As you can see like this. 
press enter just to make sure that Photoshop is, you know, dropping them in properly. And then what you want to do is you want to drag all of the layers. The quick way to do that is select holding shift and left click and I can just then drag and drop the layers below the bison head. I'm going to bring the original bison file down the bottom and just, I'm going to lock that in case I need, need it as a, a backup. I also want to um, cop, make a copy of the layer mask. So what I can do, you can see this layer mask of the actual bison head. So I need to just clean up the, the white space there. So I'm just going to do this and you can see on my vector uh, layer mask, inverse it and then make sure there's no black. So I've got this, this head mask here and what you can actually do, you can actually drag and drop to replace marks or you just press control J, make a copy and I'm going to drag the layer down the bottom there as a backup. Beautiful. What I wanted to do is go to my top layer with the bison and I wanted to change the blending mode to screen. You can also use lighten but screen typically works better. I'm going to turn my layers off. And you can see now with the screen activated, it's a bit different. It, it pretty much blends with the bottom layers. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to position some of these rocks. And I'm going to turn my top layer off. And before I like to do that, I like to cut out some of the, these, the background, right? So I can press W for the magic wand, holding shift, I just select the areas around that mountain. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to press the vector button but make sure it's inverse. So I'm gonna press Control I on the vector mask to inverse that. Then what I like to do, I'll do the same for all the other ones as well. So you can see this process. You can also go to subject, select and subject and do it that way like I showed you before. But sometimes you just gotta do whatever's faster for the moment. I'm gonna make a vector mask and press Control I or Command I to inverse it. Then I've got one more. This one I might go select and click subject, make sure that I'm on the right layer. Select, you can also see that the sky there, which is kind of cool. Let's see what Photoshop does. Beautiful, it makes an awesome selection. Then I can just press the vector mask and then invert that. So now I've got my three mountains, which is really cool. And I've got my bison here. What I'm gonna do now is start to position my mountains. So I'm gonna press control T and we're just going to drag this up like that. And we wanna sort of scale it make it interesting you can also angle things if you if you like I'm gonna press enter I'm gonna get sort of my other mountain as well and I'm gonna flip this one like this I think that looks cool and we probably don't even need the last mountain it just depends sometimes I like playing around with different things so maybe I want to put a mountain at the top of his head like this or I can just add some more at the back as a like a dynamic thing there looks interesting beautiful so now what we're going to start to do is we're going to start to brush out some of the parts so you want to go to your layers section again click the black white vector clipping mask and i'm going to use the black foreground the shortcut is shift x to flip from white to black so you can see that's the opposite and this is what happens when you go to black it actually starts to hide things so what i can do is start to paint the edges I don't want to see any of these like straight edges from the frame. That just looks ugly. So you need to make sure you clean that up. I'll also go to the other images and do the same. The mountains there. Starting to brush out, getting rid of those edges and sort of have like a fade into his face. Do the same for this one. So it does take a bit of practice to get used to this. So I'm just pressing B and then I'm, you know, making the brush bigger or small if I need to, if I have to. Beautiful. So I'm, I'm, I'm liking this at the moment. I think this is really, really cool. So what I'm going to do now is start to sort of, you know, blend some of these areas and I'm going to actually make his face black and white. So I'm going to go down to my little layer panel here. You can also go up here to layers to create a certain um, layer if you want. I like going to the bottom here and then what I want to do is go to black and white. This should make everything black and white, but what I can actually do is just tweak some of these parameters if I want. So I can make his face certain areas darker. And then what I'm going to do is hold alt or option if you're on a Mac and just 
between the two layers, you left click and it should add that black and white just to the by bison's face. What I wanted to do, I'm going to add a hue and saturation layer. And what I'm going to do is leave it on master and click colorize. Then what you can actually do is you can go and find whatever color you want, right? I typically like a nice red color, or orange color, and I bump up the saturation. You can make it heaps. Don't do, do it too much because you might, might look too crazy. So I can do it like that. Maybe I want it reddish or brownish, whatever you want. And then I can just leave it like that. Get out of that box. And you can see now we've got this cool effect. Everything's starting to blend. You can see now this mountain is over and covering his horn. So we need to fix that. I'm going to click back on the vector mask. And the best way I know how to do this is just go and like start to paint over that area. As you can see, let his horn and just paint around him. So the mountain is going to be in the background. If it's too harsh, as you can see, like it's very light. What you can do is drop the opacity down. You can press the numbers on your keyboard, like the number four, and it will drop it to 40%. And then what I'm going to do is just paint around the edges like this. I'm going to press shift X and just, I'm switching back and forth between white and black, just painting the areas that I need to, and then just hiding and showing the areas that I want to be seen. Just like that, so you can see his horn. Okay, that's kind of looking cool. That's amazing. I need to sort of blend some of these here, blend more of this mountain into his head. Like that. And the cool thing about this is we can always use this as a frame of reference. So if you hold control and click on the original mask we made of the bison's head, you can see that we have this. So what we can actually do is we can actually hide certain elements of the mountains, right? So if I wanted to hide this outer mountain, we can actually sort of get rid of it. So just make sure I'm selected on the right one. Okay, for example, this mountain, I can inverse the selection and I can literally just paint out, paint out the mountain like that if I want to. But because we want to make it like a bit interesting and creative that it's sticking out of his head, that's why we want to have this sort of mountain in the background. And I think that looks fine. You can see here as well, this mountain here, it's sort of um, a bit outside of that. So I want to sort of rub out this bit. You can see there's like a little edge here. And I want to make sure that I'm going to rub that out. And let's see if it's, not, it's I'm on the wrong layer. Make sure you're on the right layer all the time, guys. And okay, it seems to. Okay, there we go. Fix it. So I'm just gonna paint, and you can see we can use that selection as a guide, as you can see. So now I literally like rubbed out whatever was there. We can probably paint that in, but it's just sky there, so there's no mountain, so we want to make we want to leave that. So you can see there, it sort of looks like it's part of his head because you've got like that fur, which is cool. So it just adds a nice, nice effect there, which is really interesting. If any of the edges are looking weird, I can always go back to the bison and like blend out the edges here. So I'm just tapping my mouse and I'm going along the edge with a soft brush in Photoshop, just a normal soft brush. That's all you need. And I'm just going to see that there's a bit of a mess of a mountain here. So I'm going to clean that up as well. Just like that. And we sort of want to always have like a nice blend going on. Between his fur and the mountain tops, which is really, really cool. All right, beautiful. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start to sort of blend these areas again. So you can see we can blend a bit more of this mountain into here, into this mountain. This mountain's a very like snowy, rocky one. So we probably have to drop the uh, brightness and opacity, which we'll do that in like a second. And I'm just doing this. Hope you guys are enjoying this type of tutorial. You can always go back to the bison, the original mask, as you can see, and paint on the top of certain areas you want darkened. So I can darken some of his fur areas around the eye or 
around the fur, around the edges, it's fine. It's beautiful. All right, amazing. I'm gonna go back to my adjustment layer, click the little button on the bottom and go to brightness and contrast. And what I like to do is like, I like to play with the contrast. So I like to bring it up and the brightness. I don't wanna make it too bright. So I like to drop the brightness down as well of that. Amazing. And if I wanna apply it to everything, I just wanna make sure that it's not um, clipped to this certain layer. So you wanna make sure that you can see everything, whatever I'm clipping to everything, you wanna hold Alt and click in between the layers. So I'm kind of enjoying this. I need to make another one for this mountain. So I'll go to brightness and contrast again, drop the brightness so you can see, but I don't want everything to become um, darker. I'm gonna hold Alt and then just left click in between these two layers of the, the top mountain. So this big mountain here, as you can see, and then my brightness. And then I'm gonna drop this, you can see in my properties panel right here. Let's just drop the brightness down so you can see it's not going to be like so white and just going to drop it. So it like actually blends a lot better with the, with the face of the, of this ferocious beast. <laughs> um, but yeah, awesome. All right. Amazing. I think this is looking good. I think this needs to just be a bit darker. So I'm just going to, I'm going to hide some on top, some of that. And I believe we are doing well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in some clouds to make it a little more interesting. I wanna scale these clouds down. I can go to select and I can select subject. Make sure you're on the right layer. So you can see the cloud got selected. Then what I'm gonna do is just click on the bottom right, the clipping mask, and it should just get rid of the background. I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down like that. And what I like to do is just position it around the mountain, scale it small so it makes the mountain look heaps big. And then so I can put one mountain there. I'm just gonna paint that away. I'm gonna press Control J. Make sure you just select the layer. And this one I'm going to bring on top of the mountain. So now I've got another layer of clouds. Make sure it's not inside that. Um, make it sure it's on top of the brightness layer. And I'm just gonna bring this one over like this. And on the clipping mask, I'm gonna paint away the, the clouds I don't want. So I don't want too many clouds. So just zooming here. To zoom in, you just use Alt in your mouse wheel. That's typically how I do it. It might be a little bit fast, but just let me know if this tutorial is a little bit fast. And I can stay down for next time. Beautiful. You can also just press Control J again and you know move this one around and. Now, a cool trick as well is that if you select the layer, you can go to edit up the top left corner, click transform. And what you want to do is flip horizontal. And you can see the cloud just flipped, just did a backflip. <laughs> and um, we got it there. And then I can just leave it there, which is amazing. Awesome. I think these other clouds are a bit too big. So I'm just want to scale it down a slightly. Beautiful. Let's clean up this cloud here. And you can see some of the bison that you can see, it's a bit dark near his eye. So for this, what we can actually do is go to the brightness mask and we can actually paint, you know, white along his eye and that should brighten it up. Another cool thing as well is that we can actually paint, make a new layer. And I'm just gonna use the soft brush tool, but make sure it's like a white. And if you go down to either overlay, you can also go, usually color dodge works all right. But you can see overlay, it makes it a lot brighter. So you can see that. So it's sort of like out of this nice little flare scaling it up so you can see that on his eye there and I think we've done really well you can always tweak and you can blend things a lot more so you can see there's the bison and there's all the mountains that we've created and you can see the original there and you can see all the mountains there and it's looking amazing hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial 
Let me know if you want to see more tutorials like this, Photoshop, Illustrator, whatever you like. I'm here to help you grow as a graphic designer and learn the tools of the trade so you can run your full-time design business. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to hit that like button because it helps the YouTube algorithm and drop a subscribe if you want to see more design content every week. Jeremy out. I'll talk to you next time.